mindfulness is an art. It's not, there's, it's not a science. Do this, and then you'll get to the here, and now you can get this step, and now you learn this step. It's an art. And so it's much more about practicing on repeat. In Kung Fu, they teach you, you learn, you learn the form. I don't know how many, how many times, how many times I would just practice the form and then my seafood come over. Elbow in. Because everything's center line. Do a hundred of those. And he'd come over. Elbow in. Keep your elbow in. He'd say, relax. Get your feet out. No, nope, you got to sit back. Because in Kung Fu, you sit back. Sit back, elbow in. And he'd have to remind me every single day of practice. He'd come over. Now, I knew in my mind to keep your elbow in. And when I practiced at home, because I went home and I practiced every day. And when I practiced the forms at home, I knew, elbow in, keep, stay back. But my habit energy wasn't elbow in, stay back. Those were foreign to me. And I would go, and I'd say, what are we going to work on today, Sifu? He said, work on the form that, you've, that I've already taught you. A hundred. Do this a hundred times. And the mind wants to go, ah, oh, what did, what, i got to learn what's next. I want to move on. I want to I move on to the next part of the form, because I was learning the forms. I want to go to the next part of the form. No, no, no. You have to do this correctly. We have to learn how to do this part of the art. This is part of the art. Before we can move on to the next, Right? And the same thing is here. The same thing is here. This is why I've been saying to all those of you that are in the mentorship, you have to practice what I'm telling you in order for me to take you to the next step. And it's, um, I'm so thankful for being present because if I wasn't, I'd be so frustrated. <laughs> I'm for real because I'm going, ah. Because what's happened for a lot is people are coming for information not to learn an art form. They're coming for information not to discover the true self. So they think if I just show up to class for two hours, I'll eventually get that information that I've been looking for. And it's just not so. So we're here, we're learning. Practice, 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 practice your sitting meditation two, three times a day. Practice. If um, practice your walking meditation, practice your conscious breathing, practice stopping. Those are all things I've talked to you about on a base level, foundational level. You should be practicing those things every day. Whether you're on silent retreat or whether you're home, practice those things. Slow yourself. Walk mindfully. Do the dishes mindfully. Wake up, another thing that I told you to practice, wake up with a smile. Greet the morning with a smile. Everything is new. And the more that this unfolds, your practice unfolds, then those other things will begin to make, become more clear and they will make sense. It will be more easy. But if sitting meditation is still difficult, then It'll probably be very difficult to uh, consciously daydream <laughs> or consciously plan or prepare for something. So then in the meantime, I should just plan like usual, daydream like usual? Yeah, there's no problem with it. But just when you realize that you're doing it, the more that you practice conscious breathing, when you realize that you'll do it, you'll want to come back to the present. Because it feels as if there's tension on it. Daydreaming is still can be a lot of fun, 
but you can get done with some daydreams. So some daydreams are really good. Some daydreams not so much. You know what I'm talking about? And you'll get done with your daydream and you feel as if there's some weight or some fog, mental fog, or you feel a little weighted. Do you, do you recognize this, that there are moments that you might, you might wake up from the daydream feeling, oh, that's wonderful, that's awesome. Yeah. But then you could also wake up from the daydream with a weight or a fog. Yeah. Okay, that's because that's, it's happening in that place of non-present. Okay, so when you wake up from the daydream, just return to the present. No matter whether it was blissful, whether it was a nightmare, you return to the present. Whether it was a daydream or a day nightmare. Just return to the present. Return to your conscious breathing. Take three, stop. Take three deep breaths. I'm aware of the breath. I'm aware of my out breath. In. Out. Okay? And in doing so, your mind and body will be in the same place again. Because your body was somewhere, but your mind was somewhere else. And you're uniting them. Embrace the daydream. Embrace those things. Treat it like a, um, a mother caring for a baby. You don't go, ah, oh, daydreamed again. Like a mother hears her baby crying. That damn kid keeps crying all the time. That's not a, come on. A good mom goes, ah, goes to the baby and says, why are you crying? It's okay. And, and with understanding holds the child. She doesn't beat the baby because it was crying. So, okay. You weren't present. It's all right. Greet it with compassion and understanding.